So Laura Ingram is an embarrassment. Um, her whole thing is, tee hee hee, lol, have I triggered you on the left? Have I triggered you? You need a safe space? Is that what you need a safe space? Am I doing a microaggression? Like her whole thing is like, aha, triggered you liberals. And her whole identity is based around that. And it's so hollow and vapid and vacuous and sad that like, that's how, that's the lens through which she views her entire ideology and worldview. It's opposite of them. That's it. There's no like independent thought and like, hey, what do I think of this actual issue? No. It's what do those guys think? Haha, <laughs> I'm the opposite. Oh, gotcha. Stupid liberals, stupid lefties. So, um, Ingram did a segment on her loathsome show here where she's going to fear monger about a move in California to close for-profit prisons. We warned you last week that California is the incubator for the left's wildest ideas. And the state legislature recently passed a bill banning for-profit prisons in the state. Sounds like a lofty goal. Well, that includes four ICE detention facilities that can hold up to 4,500 illegals each. Now, we all know the real reason for this. Open borders. Here's what the head of an activist group behind the bill told a local outlet. People do not need to be transferred. We've had closures in the state of California, and we were able to have just inhumane closures where many people were released to their families. Yeah, the nonviolent ones were released to their families. That's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. They, like, they go to this open borders thing, and they're the only ones who ever talk about an issue like that. Ever. No Democratic candidate for office at any level of government is, is like, I'm pro open borders. None of them. None of them. The position on the left overwhelmingly is, yes, we can have a border and there can be some sort of a process, but let's not be vicious assholes and dicks and criminals in our own right. So in other words, don't put kids in cages. Don't put kids in cages. Don't overly militarize the border in a way where, you know, you take away people's basic human rights. Allow people to actually look for asylum accept actual refugees from fucking war-ravaged countries and drug war-destroyed countries. Like, these are not, this is not hard. Can there be a process? Can it be orderly? Yes. But let's be logical and reasonable and humanitarian in our approach. That's the position overwhelmingly held on the left. Even the ones they claim, uh, you're for open borders. That, Julian Castro is the one that they always go to. Because he's made arguments that sound at face value like that, but then when he describes it, it's not. It's not open borders. He wants to make it a misdemeanor, which is what it is right now. He wants to change that to a civil offense, which is still a crime, but the only difference is you stop the family separations. That's the only difference. So when they talk about shutting down, and also shutting down ICE facilities, uh, private ICE facilities, by the way, you want to know why they would do such a thing? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's because there's a, um, you know... There's a trial going on right now in court where there's a giant lawsuit against these private ICE facilities because they're doing slavery, literally, forced labor. So Laura Ingram is arguing in favor of ICE detention facilities that are doing literal slavery. That's what she's doing. Just so you know. Just so you know. And uh, the whole point of this is to fearmonger about closing these for-profit ICE detention facilities and for-profit prisons. Notice how there, she's not forming uh, an argument in favor of those things. Her whole point is, uh, California is the laboratory for far-left ideas, so it's obviously stupid. <laughs> That's not a point. That's not a point. Why would anybody have, why would any country have for-profit prisons? What you're doing now is you're incentivizing people to get locked up for crimes that aren't really crimes. Because if it's for profit, then you want more asses and more beds because then you, management makes more money. The business makes more money. So what happens? Well, it's a result of for profit prisons. You had lobbyists for the for profit prisons lobbying um, politicians to come up with more laws. So one of the ones they came up with is the three strikes law. Three strikes is not like there's, you know, some something written in the in the laws of nature 
that says like, well, obviously you're irredeemable if you've had three felonies, no matter how minor. No, they, it was a choice that they made to give people life in prison, even if it's for three incredibly minor offenses, give them life in prison. Again, why? It all ties back to profit. So this is what she's arguing in favor of. The whole idea of a for-profit prison should irk you to no end. Because it's, that's a function of society, something that tax dollars need to fund, and it's something that exists, the infrastructure for it exists as a matter of necessity. When you make it a business, when you add the profit motive, man, you don't see the perverse incentive structure that sets up to get more people arrested for crimes that aren't even really crimes. And also, by the way, the conditions are terrible because the rules are much more lax. We've covered stories on this show going back years about how they just feed prisoners this rat-tainted food. People were getting sick left and right. Why? Because they don't want to spend more money to make sure that people eat food where, you know, they are uh, giving people their human rights and they're not, you know, making them violently sick. So all that they cut so many corners and they don't treat people with dignity and respect, not saying the public prisons are that much better, but they're certainly a little bit better, certainly a little bit better and there are better rules. And also, by the way, oftentimes with private prisons, they end up paying, taxpayers still pay for it in private and public prisons, but the private ones, they mark it up even more. Like taxpayers sometimes end up paying more for private prisons when the whole original idea is we got to go to private so that we can... A reduced cost, but that doesn't happen in many cases. So this is absolutely the right move from California. All private prisons throughout this country should be shut down. Now, does that mean you should release violent offenders? No, but it does mean you should release nonviolent offenders because they shouldn't be in there in the first place. Certainly nonviolent drug offenses. Release them all.